Good morning everyone and welcome back to another video. I'm out this morning doing a harvest of some flowers. I've got a market tomorrow so I need to pick as many as I can this morning. And I thought I would bring you along for another market vlog. I'm currently picking a lot of the dahlias. I've got some more dahlias down the back that are looking stunning right now. So I'm going to head over there after I finish this little patch. The rooster next door is um, having the time of its life. You might notice that I'm wearing actual layers <laughs> rather than just like sun shirts. And that's because this morning it was honestly like the first morning that I felt like a cool refreshing breeze which I usually wouldn't expect in January but I think it's just because we're getting a little bit of um, some southerly winds that are coming through and it has been so so lovely. I have to show you this amazing dahlia that I honestly cannot find the tag for. Um, I will find the name so I'll put it on the screen but look at how stunning, stunning this is. <laughs> so beautiful. Oh my goodness, so pretty. So yes, as I was saying, I'm going to take you on a market vlog today. We've got a market tomorrow, which is, um, it's kind of like a village market, I suppose, where a lot of people make like homemade um, gifts and things like that. And I also take down some fresh veggies as well from a local farmer. So really my plan for today is to just harvest now and then I'll arrange these this afternoon. I need to go pick up the veggies this afternoon and I also need to head down to one of the stores that I had my flowers at to grab the bucket because they have sold some flowers there so I need to just check in with them and see how the flowers went. But yeah for this video I thought I could just show you the whole process of harvesting, arranging, I'm going to try and arrange a bit earlier today so that I actually have light to show you what I'm doing. This one's also really funky. It's not quite open. Um, I think this one is called Pure Bliss Dahlia and it should open up a little bit more. A lot of people say to harvest dahlias when they're like fully, fully open. I prefer to harvest them when they're just about opened. Um, they will open up a little bit more in water, at least that's what I find, um, and they just then last a little bit longer. Like this one here is too open for me. This one will probably look really sad tomorrow, so I'm not going to use this actually, even though it's so pretty. Oh, so pretty. Okay, I've got a good bucket here. I'm going to head down to the other area of the flower farm and pick the rest of the dahlias so I can have a full dahlia bucket to arrange with. All right, this is my other dahlia patch. I have two rows here and some of these dahlias are so stunning at the moment. Well, they're all stunning, but in particular, the pink show variety that I um, saved from last year and I divided the tubers. This was my really, really my first year actually doing that. This has been so productive in the last few weeks. Um, and yeah, I am so impressed with this dahlia in terms of just its size, how many stems it's throwing up. I wouldn't say I am like super confident in arranging, but I find with these dahlias that are a little bit smaller and compact and kind of more ball variety, um, they're so much easier to work with. So I think I'm just going to keep looking for these kinds of dahlias. If I do buy some more, which I probably will because... I have a problem with buying dahlias, but um, they just look amazing. I really 
haven't done uh, too much to these dahlia plants. I did give them um, a feed with some Charlie carp and I just came through when they were um, growing up and I pinched the tops so that they would branch out at the side. But other than that, I haven't done anything and they're looking really, really healthy. These are a few of the other dahlias that I saved the tubers and divided them. I have Ned Kelly here, one of my favorites. You all know I love a good burgundy flower, so pretty. And I also have some of the cashmere that is flowering. This is a lot darker than I remember it being. It's kind of like a really deep pink color with white stripes. You can see it actually better on this one. You can't really see it that well on camera at all, um, but yeah. All of the ones that I have saved from tubers are the most productive, which is really great because I love all of these varieties. So I'm definitely going to keep saving the tubers and keep um, multiplying these dahlias. I'm going to pop down to the end of the flower farm and pick the feverfew and zinnias. You've seen me pick zinnias before, so I probably won't film that, but I will check back in with you when I'm harvesting something else. Thanks. I don't know if you can hear all of the little small birds, but they are very happy. I feel like they are a lot happier when the temperature drops just a little bit. And even though there's a lot of weeds next door, um, like in this little bush area, the birds just absolutely love it. So it is what it is. It's not our property. So I can't go in there and like clear the weeds. Well, I'm sure I could ask, but sometimes just having any vegetation is better for native wildlife and I love coming down to this area of the garden and just hearing birds and hearing nature um, because I feel like I don't really get that a lot up near the house which is why I have been planting more trees down the back here and planting more like shrubs and bushes up near the house because I really want to encourage small birds um, which is a big part of the flower farm and what I want to do because I don't just want to have a monoculture of one variety of plant or anything. I also want this to be a space that other animals can come to as a refuge and have it all organic and just safe for animals. I can see all of the wrens now. They're all coming out to have a look at me to see what I'm doing. And I think I'm ruffling up some bugs around here that they might want to come and investigate once I'm done. But yeah, I would definitely encourage you if you are starting a flower farm, or you have some kind of garden to not only incorporate just all of your crops, but think about other plants and flowers that other animals might want and how you might be able to garden in a way that really minimizes any damage to your surrounding native wildlife and just how you can give back a little bit and yeah, always leave somewhere better than you found it. So this is my sweet William patch and they're pretty much done I think for summer. I need to just come through and give them a complete chop back. And yes, I now have my hat on because it's getting quite sunny and I need to be sun safe. But yeah, these are pretty much done, but there are a few little stems that I can salvage in here. So I'm just going to pick a few of these because I love these so much. I really loved using these in arrangements. They last 
They last so long in water and they're just really pretty and cute. So yeah, I'm really glad that I planted a whole row of these. This is kind of what we're getting at the moment, just really little stems. Some of them aren't even that great, so I might not use some of these, but it's better than nothing. All right, next up is straw flowers. So I have this whole row here of straw flowers. These are just um, mixed and it did rain last night. Um, so we've had a bit of moisture around. They're a little bit closed now, but you can still harvest them at this stage. I'm just gonna let them uh, dry in the garage all day and they'll be completely fine. Um, but yeah, they are all looking a little closed up right now. These tend to close up at night. Um, which I think is really cute. Um, so they'll gradually open up as the sun hits them. But yeah, I'm going to try and pick as many of these as I can because they always make the bouquets really pop, particularly these yellow ones. So now that the straw flowers are done, I am going to wait just a few hours before I pick the last of the sunflowers here, just because um, as I kind of talked about in another video, they're all facing towards the east where the sun is rising. So I just want them to face a little bit more upright and they will do that throughout the day. Um, I might just pick a few little stems of status down here in my very, very messy status area those sunflowers are not ready yet maybe in a week or two they might start blooming um, this is a mess <laughs> i need to clean this and tidy it all up take the pincushion flowers out but there's a few stems of the pincushion flowers that i really like these burgundy ones it's a little hard to see the color on camera but they are absolutely beautiful and I have some self-seeded uh, cosmos around here that I'm, I've actually purposefully let and I'm going to harvest this for some greens for the bouquets. In terms of greens, I do have quite a lot of shrubs and trees around so I will just walk around and pick what I can and I'll show you after I harvest all of those. I also have this side of the garden which is the other side of the flower farm. Really messy, needs to be cleaned up. Um, as does everywhere in summer in the garden. It's just how it is, it's just how it is. Um, but I do have a lot of um, like leptospermum plants in here, like this one in there that I can pick some greens for, but I don't think I'll need too many greens other than just the cosmos. There's also another cosmos down here. I feel like there's gonna be snakes in here, so I'm not gonna go too far in. Um, but you can see in there, it's poking up. I'll come around from the other side and pick a few of those stems for greens in the bouquets as well. I do have a few more flowers up near the cottage garden area that I will also harvest, but it's getting quite sunny, so it's gonna be difficult to film up there. But I will show you in the afternoon, I'll like lay all the buckets out and show you all of the flowers and the greens that I've harvested so that I can finish this job off and then go have some breakfast because I'm getting hungry now. afternoon it is about six o'clock so more good evening um, but I have all of the flowers out in front of me and I'll show you what I have um, harvested and what I'm going to arrange now I did just go down and pick up some veggies I have a very good assortment that um, was put together for me so I have some cucumbers lots of different capsicums I have about eight of the butterhead lettuce I said cucumbers we've also got some zucchinis as well so 
got a really nice good arrangement everything is so delicious I always love going down there Tony who is the owner she always ends up like giving me things to just try food down there and um, I love it so we always um, get our veggies from down there and have a good chat as well I've also had my flowers in there before and they sold really well so we're thinking about potentially doing that as a regular thing they have a little farm store down there where they sell lots of different local produce that's grown in their area and a few other items that are from small businesses around on the south coast so it's a really great store i always love going down there to visit and having a chat um, but i'm back now i've had a snack i'm ready to arrange all of these flowers so i'll show you what i have here now this isn't the most ideal situation to be arranging flowers obviously it's in my office the garden is out there um, but I don't actually have an undercover outdoor area and this is just the best I can do this used to be like a garage this room and they've just enclosed it so um, it works fine but yeah we just make do with what we've got here so starting over here, I have a whole bucket of beautiful straw flowers. These, um, as you can kind of see, they've opened up a little bit, but not too much. This is when I usually do like to harvest these. I personally think they just look better when they're closed. They also last a lot longer um, because they don't start to lose like their pollen and they get like a fluffy center. This is when they start to go to seed. So I just usually like to harvest them when they are closed like this. So they've all rehydrated really nicely. I've got a bucket of random greens here. I've got lots of um, beautiful cosmos greens, a few of the native grasses, got some leptospermum leaves in there I also have some tomato leaves because I use that in arrangements and it actually looks really beautiful I'll show you some with that I've got some yarrow uh, a few of these little teddy bear sunflowers that I just picked when I was harvesting all of this these are tipicina leaves they hold up really well in water and I've got some more um, lemon tea tree leptospermum and some pincushion flowers and more random straw flowers. The next bucket is all of my dahlias. You would have seen me harvest in this morning. Um, they look so beautiful. I'm really excited to work with these. Then this is kind of a more random bucket. Rookie's come to say hello. <laughs> um, but in here we have a few zinnias, some of these which are lemon rush sunflowers. They're so beautiful. I've got some dill, some more zinnias, um, some white pincushion flowers, and some other little fillers. I've got some wild geranium here. This is a native to the south coast and holds up really well in water. Then I've got a bucket of feverfew and then another bucket of zinnias over here. So not only is it difficult to kind of arrange in this room, it's also very difficult to film with the lighting. So I'm gonna do the best I can, um, but I'm just gonna set the camera up and I'll talk through a few of the arrangements that I'm putting together, but most of it will just be me arranging and I'll chat through all of the um, bouquets after I'm finished. Okay, I think that's gonna have to do. It's not ideal, we'll make do with it. So I'm just gonna make one and talk through it. And then I think what I will do is just put the camera on the flowers and just show you and speed it up a little bit. Um, I also just have with me some scissors, my snips, some twine, and a bucket container to put all of the, um, leftovers like when I trim all the stems to be the same length. So we're going to be making $25 arrangements um, and some $15 arrangements. So that's kind of what I am going to start out with and I will try, try my hardest to talk through um, like stem prices and things like that. You all right? You want me to open that up? Okay. So I'm going to start out with some Cosmos greens, nice and 
frilly and fresh. And I'm going to add some Feverfew, Feverfew stems, $1.50 or so, Cosmos, maybe like a dollar each, I'm going to say, 50 cents each. So now we have a really nice base to work with. And I really like having fillers like this because then it just makes the larger flowers sit a lot better in the arrangement. And also, I want to do this, but like I also want to say, I'm not a professional at this. This is just what I think looks good um, and what I have just heard and listened to. So just prefacing, I'm not an expert and I, I haven't done floristry courses and anything like that. So just wanted to put that out there. So we're about at $4.50 now. I think I'm going to add in some yellow straw flowers, which are these ones here. And these I would price at a dollar each as well. I'm gonna add three of these in. I usually work with threes. Um, it just looks really good and kind of catches your eye. A lot of the time in gardening and in gardens, you'll see groups of three or five clumped together. Um, and that's just what our eyes are often drawn to. So that is what it's looking like now. Then I'm going to add in some yarrow. I'm probably price this at a dollar a stem. I'm just gonna do one of these in the middle. I've totally forgotten what we're up to up to like eight nine dollars then I'm going to add in some of the dahlias and these I'm going to do at about three dollars a stem I suppose and I'm going to just have these around the outside okay it's looking good And I usually just adjust things, bring up the flowers so that you can see them all. So we are at, I'm just going to say a dollar for the fever few so that I don't confuse myself. <laughs> um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're about at like $20 now. I am going to just bump up the dahlias to about $4 each and I'm just eyeballing a lot of this. So I'm going to add an extra like five or so dollars of flowers to this. And I think some sunflowers would look really nice in this. And then I'll add some foliage and be done with this arrangement. All right, I'm going to add just one of these um, dill flowers in to have a little bit of wispiness and then finish it off with a little bit of foliage around the outside. I always like to do this. I like to add three stems of foliage of something really like wispy. You can't really see it that well in the camera, but this is a lemon tea tree. And I basically put this on the sides. I'll show you this um, once it's done. But just having these around the sides to have some height to the bouquet and just like some general airiness just looks so good. And you just fill it in where there isn't um, flowers. I like to do three because I like threes. And then that is what that one looks like. So that is done. I'll just rearrange a few things. Sometimes I might, if a green has fallen out like this cosmos, I might try and just pop that back in and just make sure that I can see all of the flowers well, making sure that the dahlias and the sunflowers are nice and high up so that people can actually see them because that's kind of what catches a lot of people's eye. And then I will just wrap that with some twine, arranging all of them. I will then wrap them all. All right, I'm going to get making these and I will show you them as I make them. I'm going to be here for a while to do all of this. I also just really enjoy this. I don't mind taking my time um, to do this. I'm probably gonna pop a YouTube video on and just have a little bit of relaxation me time and do these flowers and I will show you what they look like when I'm finished.
something that I always forget how much time it takes, but that is taking photos for like the website and Instagram takes so much time and I never have enough light to do so but Scott is out here helping me now and we're going to take some photos on um, my Canon camera. It just takes some really nice photos that I can then use um, for like advertising. It's really important to get good quality photos of your flowers because marketing material is really important. Just to be able to share what flowers you have in season and every few weeks I'm making sure that I'm taking new photos to then upload onto the website and just to keep posting on my Instagram account. That's where I get a lot of sales. So I want people to like continuously be seeing what I have available. My preferred background is something nice and green like this shrub here. The contrast is really nice to have like a darker green background. I find the photos look really great that way. Good morning everyone, it is about quarter to six. No, it is quarter past six. I need some coffee. I'm pretty much ready to go. I'm a lot more organized today, which is good. Um, I just need to pack the flowers into the car and just grab a few things that I need for the market, grab the camera and that's pretty much it. All of the arrangements look so beautiful. I've posted on Instagram about them um, and I've got a few ways to sell them if they don't sell at the markets, but hopefully they do really well today. I think it'll be a really good day at the markets because it's nice weather in terms of, it's not too hot. It is a bit cloudy, but I feel like that's kind of good for a market day in my opinion, at least for the flowers, but I'm not too sure how many people are going to be around. It's kind of like, towards the end of school holidays so hopefully there'll still be a few people around and that they pop over to the markets before all of their back to school shopping. So I'm just going to go finish packing the car and then I will take the camera along, show you the setup and how we put everything together and yeah hopefully it's a good day. I know it's nothing new but it's so good to see you this every day and I'm still so amazed by you so hold me tight through the night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just us two Every 
single day. So this is the final setup. I've got everything all displayed. These are all of the flowers. I've got the $25, $20, and then a few of the $15 arrangements. I think they look so gorgeous. And I like how the table up the front is a little bit lower than the table behind. So it gives that kind of more tiered look that I was talking about in another video. You can see the height of the tables there and then I've got all of the veggies displayed and I'll change this around as the day goes to kind of just move things around as things are sold um, I've got some more flowers up here just to balance out the height all of my bath salts here and I always have my um, business cards available and just Instagram and YouTube if people would like to follow I do want to get like a little stand that actually has like a QR code on it that you can just scan to the website and then I have a few more things like our new eucalyptus and peppermint bath salts and just a few other things like some bath bombs some of these are a little bubbly but they still work completely fine they just start to bubble a little bit on the sides when they come in contact with humidity they're still 100% dry now it was just when I was making them that they ended up being a little bubbly but the grapefruit ones they turned out fantastic and these feel really amazing they have all natural ingredients and jojoba oil in it and coconut oil with some of them they just feel really nice on your skin and they're fine for sensitive skin because I have very sensitive skin and I can use these so I've got eucalyptus and peppermint lavender and grapefruit and then over here we have all of the plants. So these are all Jeff's plants from Whitbird Environmental. So we've got lots of native tube stock. I brought a few plants from home. So I've got some hydrangeas, just some mint and eryngium. And then there's some more plants here. So we've got all natives here, apart from what I've brought. Um, and they are looking so, so healthy. So I'm excited to see how these go today. And then Jeff also sells some of his um, seeds here. And if you want a discount for the seeds online, you can use my discount code. I have all of that information listed in the description box. So this is what the stall is looking like today. I will check back in with you at some point today to let you know how we're going. And yeah, hopefully it's a good day. Thankfully, I'm feeling good. I might have another coffee later. Um, but I think this was one of the least stressful market setups that we've done, I think because I was a little bit more prepared and because I was really on it with like harvesting the flowers and then arranging them not too late. So I managed to get into bed at a reasonable time. So I'm feeling good today.
welcome to the end of this video. I wanted to just sit down and do a debrief of the market, share how we went and just an overall wrap up of the day. So it was an interesting market. It was a lot different to the other ones that I'd been to this market. We go every month to this market and I've slowly tried to build up uh, some regular customers here. And as you would have seen, we took all of the veggies, had the flowers, a really good mix of things that were on the stall. But this time in particular, people just weren't buying anything other than like some of the bath bombs and the flowers. There were the most popular items and the veggies, people just were not buying them at all. So we were left with quite a lot of veggies, which was fine because technically I didn't pay for them. I traded some flowers uh, from the local grower. So I wasn't negative in terms of money with those, um, but it was really disappointing because usually we sell out of a lot of veggies at this um, market, but hardly no one was buying veggies. I think a lot of it was to do with people were just over food and over food shopping after Christmas, which is fine. Um, but yeah, I was a little disappointed because that's kind of what I really like about markets. I love fresh food and local produce when I go to a market. So yeah, it was very different this time. So we didn't do great on the veggies, uh, but we did sell quite a lot of flowers, which was good. So overall for the day we did a total of 301 dollars in terms of sales um, but really we did 341 dollars um, with the products because uh, on that day i sent a few flowers down to my local garden center and they sold two bunches there so that was another 40 dollars at 20 dollars each so all up for this market event i'm saying in sales we did about 341 dollars now the market fee is 20 dollars at this market so pretty low uh, and then usually i take you know another like few dollars off for the square fees i'm yet to calculate that so i'm gonna roughly say we came out with about 315 dollars which was pretty good in terms of sales for the day um, at the start of the year where people aren't really buying a lot because it's after christmas and they're conserving their money a little bit more so overall I was pretty happy with the day a breakdown of what we sold we sold about $52 worth of veggies which is a lot less than we usually sell we're usually up around like the 120 150 mark for those we sold $214 worth of flowers that included $210 of fresh flowers on the day that is uh, and one of the sea holly plants that I brought. In terms of the fresh flowers, this is the first market that I am bumping my prices up to doing $25 arrangements. This market, I wasn't too sure how that was going to go because a lot of people aren't wanting to spend a lot of money at this market. There's a lot of like pensioners that come and just a lot of people who aren't interested in spending a lot at these markets. So I was surprised that they did pretty well at $25. We sold about five of those, two at $20 and then three at the $15 mark. So a good range of prices and I think I'll keep those prices for the next market here. I think it is important to really just reflect the prices on your customers. So I'm not going to be taking $40, $50 arrangements down to this market in particular. By all means, if you live in a larger populated area and you have people willing to spend that kind of money, then totally bring that kind of um, those kind of bouquets down and mark your stems according to your uh, surrounding population. I am just not going to be making that kind of money at these markets. It's a small little village community market where people are so happy to even see fresh flowers there. Um, I get so many people just coming up to have a look at the flowers and enjoying them, taking photos, and that's fantastic. But yeah, I would not do too well at all if I was just pricing my bouquets at $40, 50 $60. So that's why I stick to the lower end of it, but I do try and make sure that I'm not putting like $40 worth of flowers in a $20 arrangement, if you know what I mean. I try and mark them and price them accordingly. It's also really hot and it's summer and some of these flowers aren't going to last a long time. So, you know, with the dahlias in some areas, if you do have a bit more of a cooler climate, um, for us, the, that day was pretty warm and the following days also were. 
they're not going to last that long so I don't really want to be pricing them at like $8 a stem when I know that the climate and the temperature means that they're not going to last a long time in people's houses because of the day that it was really hot and the flowers had to withstand that so price accordingly is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and then we saw $35 worth of bath bombs and then the $40 worth um, of flowers at the local garden center. So pretty good for the day. I was really happy with it. Um, again, I had a lot of compliments about the stall and how it looked. So many compliments about the flowers. I think daily is just bringing in so many more people and they're just so different, the flowers. So I'm loving having all of the dahlias in arrangements. I think they were some of the first ones to go. I did straight bunches of dahlias with like some fever few and greenery in them. They sold really well. So I'm pretty much going to replicate this again next time. Maybe just take a little less veggies, unfortunately. So that was a wrap up. I really hope you enjoyed seeing another market vlog. If you did, make sure to like this video and subscribe for lots more content. It is completely free for you and it really truly does help me out so much any interaction that you do have with these videos. Uh, I also filmed another market vlog over on my Patreon channel. So that is up over there if you would like to see more market vlogs and content over there. It's a way to financially support me over there and to help me create more videos. And I truly appreciate it um, without your support and watching these videos and supporting me, I wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you so, so much. And if you do want to see more content, head over there or you can follow me on Instagram at The Nature Patch for regular updates or the patch in bloom for flower updates and to follow my business journey over there. Let me know what you're up to at the moment, whether you're running a market stall or selling flowers or what's happening in your garden. I would love to connect and hear what you're all up to. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. And until my next one, happy gardening, everyone. Bye.